This is a short video on independent and identically distributed data, which are two separate but often combined properties of sampling. So we'll think about two small examples. First example number one is, well, do two coin flips. So we'll uh, flip a coin. If it comes up heads, we'll write down a one. If it comes up tails, we'll put a zero. So in other words, our y is an indicator function of whether the coin comes up heads. So if it is heads, this gives us a one. Otherwise, we get a zero. And we can imagine before we flip the coins, we make some spaces where we're going to write down the value of the first flip and the value of the second flip. So if we flip and we get heads, heads, we would write down one, one. If we get heads, tails, one, zero, and so on. So the first question we can ask is, do we have independent sampling in this case? So the idea with independent sampling is after we've flipped the coin the first time, if we think about the second coin flip, does its probability of getting a heads or tails depend on the actual realized value that we got for the first flip, y1? Now in this case, if we're just flipping a coin and then flipping it again, um, aside from some strange arguments, uh, they're independent, right? If we get heads the first time, it does not affect our probability of getting heads the second time. It's just, um, you know, unless you think about, oh, if it starts heads when you flip it or it starts tails, uh, they're just separate coin flips. They're not related. So one way we could write that mathematically is that the probability that our second flip is heads, or the probability that y2 equals 1, given that our first flip, y1 equals 1, or was heads, is the fact that we know the first flip was heads is not relevant. So it's going to be the same as the unconditional probability that y2 equals 1. So in other words, knowing the value of the first flip does not actually tell us anything about the probability that the second flip will be heads. So here we have independent sampling. We can think about a separate example um, where we just go find a random person somewhere in the world and ask how many years of education they've completed. So again, we could imagine you know, we have our piece of paper, we make the space for Y1, the space for Y2, uh, so we go, we find someone, we fill in their, their y1 value, maybe it's 12, and then we do the same thing. We just go find a completely separate, random person somewhere in the world and ask them how many years of education they've completed. So similar to the coin flip case, because uh, when we get y2, it's just a completely separate process that does not depend on the value of the first observation, we have independent sampling. So among other implications, this means y1 and y2 are uncorrelated, uh, so they have a zero correlation, or equivalently a zero covariance. So we can write covariance 
equals zero. That's one uh, implication of having independent sampling. And just to highlight in both these mathematical expressions we wrote out, these are from the before sampling perspective, right? Before we've filled out any of these values here and treating these y1 and y2 as random variables who could be, in the coin flip case, could be 1 with some probability, but also could be 0. Or in the education case, could be 12, could be 10, could be 14. Uh, they're both modeled here as random variables. So when we're thinking about these different types of sampling, we're thinking about these mathematically from a before sampling perspective. So that's the independent part of IID, or independent and identically distributed. Uh, the second part is uh, the identically distributed, which is basically does Y2 have the same distribution? Again, before sampling, thinking of this as a random variable, uh, same distribution as Y1. So in the coin flip case, uh, assuming we're using the same coin, and again, there's no weird, you know, physics uh, anomalies. We assume the probability our first flip comes up heads is the same as the probability our second flip, second flip comes up heads. So in other words, these are I identically distributed and again combined with the independence that means we have IID sampling. Similarly in the second example uh, because both Y1 and Y2 are just a random individual from somewhere on earth uh, they're coming from that same population so they have the same distribution. Uh, so here we also have IID sampling.